what uh, are hot topics at this moment in time of what people want to work on with, a, with an NLP coach or uh, using personal development? Um, I coach, I'm, I predominantly see myself as an NLP trainer and, and trainer of coaches. Um, but what is it that people call me for? And I don't advertise as a coach, which means I don't try to sell a certain type of package to a person. So people approach me and they tell me what they want to work on. And the thing that people really want to work on is actually changing their career, changing where they work. And so when you start digging into the science of what makes people happy at work, you actually see a parallel, or I see parallel, with my clients where like, what are they saying to me as to why they are miserable at the place where they work or in their career or the type of job that they have. And so scientists have determined there are three major factors that determine happiness at work. Factor number one is about uh, purpose and meaning. And that's what I hear all the time is that my clients want to shift their career because they feel that are not serving the greater good. They're not in service. They don't feel that what they're doing for a living makes any human or any group of humans better off, or animals, or the environment. This is uh, Los Angeles. I'm actually a few steps away from our training venue. We were three times a year um, back here in April. And so purpose and meaning serving the greater good. The second thing that people are after are positive relationships or even friendships at work. So th that means that what people are not getting is no purpose and meaning and they are not working with people that they like to be working with. So that's the shift that people want to make. I want to work in an environment with people that I actually like. Well, that makes complete sense considering we as human beings really need connections I think a lot of us learned in the, in the last couple of years what it's like to not have as many connections live as we would like to and how that affects the brain, how that has affected mental health and happiness. And so it's about relationships. And what's the third thing then? Well, that is actually hope and optimism. Optimism is one of the markers of emotional intelligence and optimism is about looking at the world and this future uh, as an, an inviting place to be. And, and hope is really about that things are going to turn out for, for the better. So hope and optimism is something that people need to have present in the world. So what I'd like you to examine for yourself at this moment in time, um, what is your level of satisfaction with the level of purpose and meaning that you get out of your work or your life as a whole? because we're not just workers. What is your level of satisfaction with hope and optimism? And what is your level of satisfaction uh, with the relationships that you keep at work? And then, you know, the thing is, if you don't have these things then really uh, represented in your life outside of work, then you are probably a candidate for being pretty unhappy or maybe even burning out or things like that, okay? So the, the, the second thing that I, I want you to think about is like, how long has, have you been feeling, if it's negative, how long have you been feeling this? And how long are you going to continue accepting this? What's the time frame? So if you're not happy at work, what I'd like you to do is I want you to write a contract for yourself. And in this contract, you will state how many months you are willing to put up with a job that has no feelings of purpose and meaning, um, hope and optimism and positive relationships, and maybe some pointers as to what specifically you would like to change. And, and, and put a time frame to that, you know? And, and at that time frame, it's not like you need to quit your job. You could do that. <laughs> you, could, you could program <laughs> in your computer an auto email to be sent to your boss that you're that you're quitting um, you may not want to forget that one but the thing is is like what is it you're going to do about it yeah so to that you remain awake uh, the wheel of your car 
and, and to ask yourself, what is my level of satisfaction? Right now, write it down and measure that every six weeks until the contract date comes where you don't quit, but you start looking for opportunities outside of where you are working right now. And either that can be in a new company, in a new career, in a new profession. And especially this is true for people over 40, uh, between 40 and about 55 is when people tend to do uh, their very last career shift. So keep that in mind that you do not put off making this shift um, for too long. And I'm saying that not just to the people in their 40s, but I'm also sa saying this to the people in their 30s because, you know, the big 4-0 uh, comes around soon enough. So that's it. And uh, if you actually have more ideas about what videos I should be creating next, let me know and uh, I'll turn it into a video. See you around.